Hey guys, Winston for Carbide3D here. Today, we're going back to basics with Carbide Create. I know a lot of you are getting started with new machines, so I think it's prime time to revisit some fundamentals. Carbide Create has changed over the years and will continue to evolve. This video will show version 451 of Carbide Create. Please use caution if watching this video in the distant future as buttons and their positions may shift during the passage of time. Today, we'll cover some basic information about the user interface and make toolpaths for something simple, like a super basic coaster. Let's get started. Upon opening Carbide Create, you'll be greeted by a blank workspace. This is where you'll draw out what you want to cut. But before we get there, let's do some housekeeping in the Setup tab. Job Setup is where you can define the particulars of your project as well as adjust some common settings. Stock Size defines how large your canvas is. You can make this as large as your stock actually is, but I like to set my stock in Carbide Create no larger than I need it. To me, that's less distracting. Here, I won't need more than about 4 inches in each dimension to get the job done. Stock thickness is how thick your stock is. Huge surprise, right? In this section, you can also define where you want your origin point to be set. Some people like to touch off on the top of their material. I personally like to set my zero at the bottom of the workpiece. My stock will be a quarter inch thick, and I trust it to be flat enough. You can also adjust where on your material you want to set the X, Y, zero. Next, you can choose what kind of material you're cutting. This is more for bookkeeping purposes than anything else, as you will be the one selecting cutting parameters later. In the machine selection prompt, you can choose what kind of CNC you have. This mainly just limits how large an area you can cut. The most important parameter to set here is your retract height. This should be a safe distance above your workpiece, enough to clear any features on top of your stock like clamps. I'm not using clamps, so a sixteenth of an inch is plenty for me. Higher values are safer, but you also don't want it to be such a large value that you're waiting ages every time your machine repositions itself. This is one of my pet peeves when running a CNC. In the document background setting, you can choose how large or small you want your canvas grid spacing to be. You can also import a background image to use as a reference or to trace over. Once everything is set to your liking, you can start designing. CNC toolpaths are always defined by vectors. That means we need lines, curves, or closed shapes to cut on or around. Images cannot be used to directly control the trajectory of a router. There's no direction information in pixels. The exception would be if you're using a grayscale image as a height map. This technique could be used to machine a topographic map, or any number of decorative carvings, or even a spoon like this Carbide Create Pro project. But in the regular version of Create, you'll need to work with vectors, and we have a variety of tools you can use to draw and position basic shapes and freeform curves. For creating the most basic coaster in the world, a circle is a great place to start. I'll use the Circle tool to draw a circle, and then adjust it in the sidebar to be about 3.5 inches in diameter. I'll also reposition it so that the bounding box is touching the origin in the lower left corner. That gives us a vector that defines the overall shape of the coaster. Now would be the perfect time to decorate this coaster with whatever your heart desires. Some people might choose text or some sort of geometric pattern, but I would like to draw your attention to the presence of a modest built-in vector graphic library, as well as the option to import your own custom SVG or DXF files. You can scale and position these as you see fit. Once you've settled on some simple design elements, it's time to start making toolpaths. We're going to cut this coaster out in two operations. The first will be to engrave our decorative design, so I'll pick my text and goat and hit contour. You could pocket these shapes out, however, you would need an extremely tiny end mill in order to define some of these fine details. You can see based on the generated toolpath which areas are not going to be machined. Instead of resorting to smaller and more fragile cutters in order to cut out these features, I find it easier to just cut directly on the outline with an engraver. Here I'll be using Carbide3D's 501 PCB engraver, which is totally useful for more than just engraving PCBs. I'll select No Offset in the Contour Toolpath dialog so that my cutter follows the line exactly, and set this toolpath to cut 0.015 inches deep in total. The one thing we have not set yet is the tool itself, and this is one area where things have changed significantly from previous versions of Carbide Create. 
When you go to select a tool, there are multiple databases, each specific to a particular machine and material combination. We currently support a handful of the most common materials and will be adding more as we test them. But if you don't see the material you're looking for, leave a suggestion for it on the forum and choose the closest match in the meantime. HDPE is a good stand-in for most soft plastics. Acrylic and polycarbonate can be generically used for hard plastics. Hardwood parameters are intended for something like maple, but if you're going to cut a super exotic wood species that's at the top of the Janka hardness scale, use some common sense. Maybe back off a little on the settings. Absolute worst case, you can always default to the speeds and feeds for aluminum. It doesn't get much more conservative than that, unless you're cutting brass or copper. We also now allow you to make your own tool library. Just duplicate an existing library and you can plug in your own speeds and feeds for whatever machine, material, and tool combination you want. You can also add custom end mills into this library if you so choose. This data is all saved in a CSV file you can access through Carbide Create's data directory. Just make sure you don't mess with the file naming convention that we use. For this coaster engraving, I'm going to use speeds and feeds from the hardwood database. My tool of choice here is the 501. To cut out the coaster, I'll select the outline of the coaster, then choose the 102 8th inch end mill from the hardwood database. I'm okay leaving the default cutting parameters untouched, though if you're feeling impatient you can certainly play around with these values. I'll make sure that this cut goes through the entirety of my stock by setting the final depth at the bottom of the stock. You can preview the cut if you want, but keep in mind that the 3D preview is somewhat low resolution. It's a rough visualization, not a high fidelity simulation. So if you know an end mill will travel through an area, but the 3D preview doesn't look pixel perfect, don't worry about it. 9 times out of 10, it'll be just fine. Export the G-code and you're done. Note that if you have a bit setter on your Shaboko or a tool length probe like on the Nomad, you can export a single G-code file. Otherwise, you'll need to export the toolpaths on a per-tool basis by temporarily disabling dissimilar toolpaths. And that's basically how to create G-code using Carbide Create in a nutshell. Create a vector, select it, choose a toolpath type, choose a tool, adjust cutting parameters if necessary. This is an extremely simple example, but these steps form the basis for more complex projects. I'll go through some more examples in future projects, but until then, good luck and have fun machining, folks.